Hello everyone and welcome to this seventh video in the series on Leela's opening repertoire. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're going to be having a look at sort of Queen's Gambit declined type of uh, um, ideas. Because Leela, well, Leela looks at a number of interesting things in these lines. So after d4, d5, c4, e6, we've already seen that Leela also likes the Queen's Gambit accepted as well. We saw that in the, the very first video. But let's have a look at c4, e6. Knight c3 and now not c6, which would be the semi-slav, but other moves like, for example, knight f6. Now, this is uh, um, Leela's main choice, just like alpha zero. And uh, actually, Leela and alpha zero tend to like pretty much the same things in this line. So c takes d5, e takes d5, <coughs> pardon me, bishop g5, bishop e7, e3, castles, bishop d3. And now Leela likes the move rook e8. Um, yeah, slightly unusual move order. Normally you play uh, knight bd7, for example, but rook e8 is quite uh, decent as well. Um, and then what does uh, Leela want here? Well, knight f3 is Leela's main line. Uh, h6, virtually never played before. You never played a move like that. Um, I mean, it is quite a useful move to attack the bishop on g5, but um, uh, the idea simply is that uh, uh, when you play h6, if white gets a knight into e5, then it's very hard to drive away because f6 allows knight g6. You know, h6 uh, is just weakening the light squares. And that's been sort of orthodoxy that's, uh, you know, held sway for uh, many, many years. Um, but actually, yeah, you know, the engines are uh, are sort of challenging that. And alpha zero was playing h6 lines all the time against uh, stockfish eight. So bishop f4, uh, slightly unusual. Uh, the idea is uh, if bishop h4, you do tend to get hit with knight e4 ideas. So People are looking a lot at meeting h6 with bishop f4 and just trying to claim that it's a subtlety drawing out a weakness. And uh, here Leela wants to play c5, castles knight c6, knight b5 c4. It gets pretty sharp here because uh, obviously um, white's threatening knight c7 here. But knight h5 hits the bishop on f4, bishop c7, queen d7, bishop e5, knight f6, a4, a6, knight c3, queen d8. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, Leela's main line. It carries on for uh, a little while longer. And Leela's uh, giving something like a, a 0.13 advantage. Quite interesting, though. You know, just uh, um, rather than playing uh, a system with uh, um, with c6, for example, uh, and, uh, you know, moving the knight d7 to f8, I mean, the classical stuff that we've all seen, Leela's really, you can see, with rook e8, really trying to see where it can get in c5 and knight c6 and just strike back aggressively at white centre. And, uh, yeah, why not? Not stupid at all, I think. Um, I mean, another interesting line for white here is to play knight e2, and this was the... Uh, really, this type of system was what Botvinnik discovered in the 1940s and 50s, and he scored a, a number of fine wins with it. <clears throat> it was also really meant to be the reason why uh, this move order for black to play the Queen's Gambit uh, declined. Um, that uh, knight c3, knight f6, this was really thought to be inaccurate because white was able to uh, play variations where the knight went to e2. Yeah, nowadays, the engines don't really seem to worry at all. So, I mean, Leela's main line is c6, um, and then, oh, I gave it, uh, sorry, uh, knight bd7, castles, c6, queen c2, knight f8, and uh, here Leela wants to play rook e1. Um, f3, that was my favourite move in the position, and um, really it's the plan that Bob Vinnick introduced, um, just aiming to play e4. But Leela's just very calm about it, and just um, knight g6, takes, takes, bishop b6, takes takes e5 bishop b7 rook d1 and then uh, a rather interesting move queen b6 was played in quite a, a good correspondence game black held in the end but um uh yeah Leela just plays rook f8 uh, quite amazingly just uh, protecting the pawn on f7 h3 king h8 just sort of uh, ends up being a bit tight at the back and uh, eventually will achieve something like uh, c5 or f6 i don't know i mean i find this quite um uh yeah slightly abstract, not perfectly easy to uh, to understand really. So um, I still sort of feel that this plan has got something for uh, for white. I mean, Leela looks at rookie one 
and then knight f4 so not really looking for f3 immediately i mean i, I do think that f3 here would also be quite reasonable in this position although you know black players are uh, influenced by engines here are uh, attending to play this move b5 and then uh, playing bishop b7 and really trying to expand on the queen side with b4 and c5 very aggressive plans but still i mean i always quite like these positions for uh, for white I always feel that there's uh, a lot of uh, you know coiled potential in uh, in white's position i mean leela's line carries on knight f4 king g7 bishop h4 knight e6 knight e2 which to be honest all feels a little bit wimpy really but we've seen many times in the in the tcc that uh, yeah the engines really don't trust these f3 e4 ideas and uh, what tends to happen in these queen's gambit declines is that uh, both sides seem to maneuver around the structure but uh, but all, both sides are always very wary of uh, creating extra weaknesses so um yeah i mean that uh, basically looks pretty okay for uh, for black if you follow uh, if you follow what um, what leela is doing um the only other move that i that i looked at after rook e8 was uh, queen c2 um and uh, but there leela was again hitting out with h6 bishop h4 and then c5 again and then again knight c6 even looking for knight b4 so definitely this rook e8 idea i, I think it's uh, it's quite interesting i mean it could definitely be used to uh, to um, uh, yeah, to give White an unexpected shock with some counter play arriving quickly like that, rather than the you know the good old fashioned passive knight c6, knight d7 to f8, which are also quite reasonable, of course. So yeah, along the years, Black's tried a lot of um, ideas after knight c3, you know, thinking that knight f6 was inaccurate. Um, one of the ideas is uh, is bishop e7. <clears throat> And what's the idea of bishop e7? Well, the idea is that when we take, white's no longer able to play bishop g5. So we end up playing bishop f4. And uh, yeah, this is another line that Botvinnik introduced. So uh, black plays bishop f5, trying to uh, get the bishop onto an active uh, square. After bishop d3, we'll just exchange off the bishops, and that should be pleasant for uh, for black. But Botvinnik came up with the idea against Petrojan of playing g4 and h4. Very risky for uh, black to take this pawn because of queen b3 hitting the b7 pawn. And uh, well, there's, there's been a lot of theory on this. And uh, well, Leela goes uh, quite far. h6, knight f3, bishop g4. And this has been played in the game uh, Lenderman against Narayanan, uh, Charlotte 2021. And here Leela wants to play instead of knight h2, which was what Lenderman played, bishop g2. And uh, well, we get this position takes takes. Rook c8, a4, a6, g6, takes e4. Yeah, I'd almost think that white was winning, really, but uh, Leela doesn't really think so. He thinks it's 0 0.14. But, yeah, I don't know. This bishop g2 idea seems to have quite a bit of venom. I wouldn't uh, certainly wouldn't uh, like to face this as black with, uh, with no preparation at all. So it might be worth uh, investigating this line. Now, an, an old line that got uh, um, reinvigorated is the Janowski uh, a6. Um, I do remember actually uh, back in the day. You know, I'm always been keen on, uh, on on chess history and historical ideas. I do remember it's one of those lines that you look at and you sort of say, well, you know, because I played the queen's gambit accepted and d takes c4 threatens b5, but I just sort of thought you, it was one of those things where you, where you just think, well, you know, if it was really good, <clears throat> then more people would play it, and uh, you just go on analysing sharper lines or whatever. But um, yeah, this has proved to be very popular. Magnus Carlsen has uh, taken it up. Um, and uh, well, Leela's reasonably happy with the line. After knight f3, recommend c6, and uh, <coughs> queen c2, knight f4, bishop f4, and then bishop d6, just uh, exchanging off the um, uh, the bishops like that. I mean, this move a6 is not super fantastic. I mean, it does weaken the dark squares, but on the other hand, nothing terrible is happening. And uh, well, this is Leela's line, knight e5, uh, a novelty. Bishop b6, bishop d3, castles h3, rook e8, castles, and then c5, um, queen d2. And you can see that, uh, I mean, white's got some sort of typical queen's gambit declined advantage where there's this isolated d pawn and this bishop is better than this one. But these are also the types of positions that engines hold very easily. Might be a little bit more tricky for a human player. You know, you, you can get a little bit worried with uh, when these sort of things start, uh, you know, coming towards you. But uh, yeah, Leela considers it just 0 0.17, so not a very big advantage for uh, um, for uh, for white. Um, looking at more uh, third uh, third move options, obviously there's the Tarash as well. And uh, this is quite intriguing as well. And again, it's, you know, um, 
theory that uh, has just been accepted for hundreds hundreds of years you know and uh, and uh, the engines are just avoiding it i mean the reason is that engines don't particularly like playing knight c6 which has been the main line in the tarash for uh, forever and ever uh, mainly because of this line dc when after d4 knight a4 takes takes queen a5 check well you've got various ways of doing it but uh, essentially um you know you just uh, uh, you just end up in a position where uh, the centre gets cleared away. White's got the two bishops. There's no winning chances for uh, for black. Only white's got the winning chances. So um, actually, the engines don't want to uh, to face this, and they play this move knight f6, which really was thought to be a beginner's mistake. But um, well, it's been played by uh, uh, Nihal Sarin uh, very recently uh, against Richard Rapport. Um So um, yeah, it's clear again that people are looking at Leela's ideas. And uh, bishop e6, e3, and then c4 and uh, is uh, Leela's idea. Bishop b2, bishop b4, castles, castles, knight e5, knight bd7. Bishop f3, queen a5, takes, takes. And, uh, well, you know, there's uh, a lot of, uh, uh, quite a bit of theory on this now. But, uh, yeah, actually, um, uh, black seems to be doing fairly okay. And it's quite interesting. I mean, you know, if, if black really can manage to get the pieces sorted out, and really uh, get this uh, pawn moving then yeah this queenside majority could prove uh, quite effective of course you've always got to watch out for your center which you know could become weak as well but um, this doesn't look too bad for black and 0.16 according to uh, to Leela. so yeah i mean i think uh, this line's definitely going to get more and more popular i think and uh, again <clears throat> quite amazing just challenging uh, orthodox theory you know for the for, for, for the past uh, uh, for the past hundred years actually what else do I have for you um, in all these lines? Um, well, one interesting idea is uh, looking at some of the uh, uh, the Queen's Gambit lines that occur via knight f3. So knight f3, knight f6, and then knight c3. I and mean, if you give this to Leela, Leela does tend to want the uh, the Catalan. But knight c3 is uh, um, is pretty good. Now, Leela, just like Alpha Zero, wants the Raggers in. And, uh, well, we've seen this a lot during the TCC uh, uh, chess bonus, where Leela... Uh, Komodo and uh, Stockfish take on other engines from the starting position. Um, it's just really, really even. This uh, has all, be, all, all been played actually in uh, in Stockfish 8 Alpha Zero uh, games as well. Um, really quite amazing actually. I mean, uh, what those two engines uh, played at that time, you know, really has turned out to be, uh, um, well, you know, really incredibly uh, uh, prescient of what was to come really, of what the best openings were. Um, this is what this is uh, also a, a Stockfish 8 Alpha Zero game. It's also Leela's main line. Stockfish took a few times on um, on uh, B7, but uh, but yeah, there was enough counterplay for uh, for Black here. Queen F6, uh, Bishop F5, threatening uh, is is quite unpleasant. Um, I mean, actually, probably you need to be Stockfish in order to uh, you know make sure you get your uh, your white advantage in this position. Um, Queen e7, knight e5, knight b3, rook d1, knight c5, a number of games with uh, with this line. Queen e3, knight e4, knight d3, a5, rook f6, knight e5, you know, the game goes on. I and mean, basically black is uh, fine, but uh, as always, you know, Stockfish was uh, managing to create uh, some problems there. But Alpha Zero was uh, always managing to create enough uh, activity. But the Ragazin's really ultra solid and, uh, well, you've got a lot of examples of... Uh, of uh, of solid ragazins in this bonus so uh, do take a look at that if you're uh, if you're interested um against bishop e7 the orthodox queen's gambit then Leela wants to play bishop f4 and uh yeah i mean again there's a lot of a lot of dull lines here uh, knight h5 i mean this sort of structure has been played a lot at the uh, elite level and uh, well magnus carlson lost a game against uh, nakamura one time in a in a rapid but that was kind of more the surprise. I mean, it's um, uh, really if, you know, at the end of the day, it just seems to end up be becoming extremely equal. But Leela thinks it's the most promising, 0.13 for white. So uh, yeah, might be worth uh, uh, investigating again. Um, after knight c3, actually d takes c4 was Koi Visto's uh, favorite move. So it was just interesting to see uh, what uh, would happen. And actually Leela goes for the same sharp double pawn sacrifice offer i mean uh, taking on c3 here is uh, well it uh, it's reasonably uh, reasonably dangerous you should go back to e7 you shouldn't take on c3 otherwise that really looks like a, a game from the romantic era um but yeah i don't know i mean this this feels very dangerous knight f6 
is the move that Leela wants. And um, uh, yeah, there have been quite a few um, high class games. This looks quite dangerous for a black, but this move is the key. The idea being that after knight c6 bc, the rook on b8 is defending the bishop on b4. So we get rook d1, castles, takes takes, queen a7, bishop d7, queen a4, c5, queen c2, bishop c6, dc, queen e7, which is uh, a correspondence game. And uh, well, a3 was played there. Leela wants uh, bishop f1, queen c5, bishop e3. Might be a slight advantage for white. Uh, Leela gives it 0.12. Um, after all, you've got a past uh, queenside pawn and uh, the pawn on c7 is weak. But black's pieces are very active, so uh, it's not absolutely huge or anything. But uh, this looks quite like quite a decent line for uh, for black as well. And uh, yeah, d takes c4 was what uh, Koi Vista wanted. And you can see that uh, uh, you can see that in uh, one of the uh, earlier opening series that uh, that we looked at. So that's basically the queen's gambit declined, uh, according to Leela. Um, in the next videos, we're going to be having a look at um, Grunfeldt's King's Indians, also Nimzo Indians as well. So stay tuned.